And what's up guys, I'm Fire, and today I wanted to talk about some Battlefield 4 and what I would like to see in it. And because of that, there's a lot of uh, rumors going around and a lot of uh, speculations, what people are going to be talking about and, and a wish list. And here's my wish list and hopefully uh, some of the things will be put inside the game because, let's face it, Battlefield 3, it had its moments where it failed and moments where it was actually good. Now, there's a lot of things going on about battlefield 4 and one of the things i wanted to say was i hope there's going to be a lot more destruction unlike the maps that came with the game altogether there was hardly any destruction whatsoever unlike in bad company 2 there was tons of destruction everything could be destroyed or at least almost everything and buildings can actually come down and that's where that phrase where it's like there's a sniper in that building and then the other guy would say what building because he destroyed it and it's and he got the guy that's inside it now it, you can't do that when you shoot a building or something it does a little bit of damage and then that's it and you can do destruction kills if you want by shooting up into the the like the building and then the parts will come down and kill the, kill the guy but it's not always reliable and it doesn't always do it because there's times where you can shoot the wall and it still doesn't do anything so hopefully battlefield 4 will have a lot more destruction where there's actually going to be parts of the map that are like completely destroyable where it can fall down and stuff kind of like what the back to car can maps did where the destruction was like used a lot and it was awesome because almost every like small corridor corridor area could be destroyed which is what they use for the aftermath uh, maps too and also think about how close quarters does i know that has a lot of hate and a lot of people like it as well but they did a great job with the destruction in that because there's a lot of pieces in the map that can be destroyed or you can just blow a hole into a wall and then walk right through it and that's really cool and I just wish they could have used that style of like quote unquote HD destruction and used it for the other maps as well because a lot of the other maps were very lacking in the destruction department. Another thing I was hoping to see was more class balancing because back in Bad Company 2, I, I know I'm only referencing that, but that's the other Battlefield I ever played because I just recently found out about Battlefield back when Bad Company 2 came out. So that's why I'll be like referencing that a lot more than any other game. So back in Bad Company 2, the classes were very well balanced. In my opinion, they, very, they were very well balanced. The Recon had the C4, which was able to take down the tanks and other things and blow up buildings. And I thought that was pretty good because a Recon is supposed to be stealthy. And if it's supposed to be stealthy, it can get behind the enemy lines really easily and then put C4 in the tank. And I I, li I know what they're trying to go with, uh, with, what DICE is going with with Battlefield 3 and giving the support people the Claymores and C4. But I was actually thinking that the Recon could also be using C4, or at least something that would help them have a bigger, a better chance in order to fight the other classes. Because we all know that Assault class has got to be the most like overused, overpowered class there is. Because if you have a full team of medics and a, let's say, an infantry only like map or like something like Metro, uh, it's just gonna be a medic train. That's all it's gonna be. And, and since you can use the defibrillator super fast, I'm hoping that in BF4 it will be balanced in a way that there's going to be like a delay time where you can, uh, we, when after you revive someone, that it will take a few seconds for it to charge back up. Because this thing where you go zap, zzz, zap, zzz, zap, and just bring back everybody, and you can get a few kills, but the last guy will get you, and then he'll just revive everybody, and it's like nothing ever happened. And all it's going to do is get you frustrated. And when you have the medic trains, it just ruins the effect of trying to play Battlefield. And like in uh, Bad Company 2, we didn't have that. All the classes were very well balanced. And I and I hardly ever experienced any type of uh, medic trains in Bad Company 2. I just thought uh, it was just very well balanced in my opinion. Now, as far as going back with the uh, sniping, I'm going to a little bit about sniping. And BF4, I really do hope they fix that because in BF3, sniping is really challenging. It's not that easy. And although I do have to agree with the the two shots in the body, one shot in the head, uh, at any range. However, I do wish that around 10, 15 meters away from the person at point blank, you should get that one hit kill, even if it's in the body. 
it's just really, really annoying when somebody could be like, oh, there's a recon there. Let's just go swarm him. And the recon, of course, is like, oh, crap. I'm almost like I'm all alone here. All my guys are dead. What am I supposed to do? Even a pistol won't kill them all because obviously when you're by yourself, pistols are good, but not, uh, not in every situation. So when these guys are like swarming right in front of you and you have a sniper, so you do the one shot and then you switch your pistol, you should be able to do boom and then go back, boom again, and get the second guy if you're really good at aiming. If he's like right there in front of you. I have time, there's a lot of times where it is a one shot kill, but there are other times where I can like shoot him from the hip and then shoot from, the, uh, get a pistol kill at the end. But there's also times where I do a hip fire or something. I get an 80% uh, kill assist when the, my squad mate. Uh, kills them so it's really stupid how many how unreliable it is to getting those one-shot kills when dice said it was going to be a one-shot kill on the chest if he's like right in front of you i just hardly ever see that another thing i hope that they fix and be a four is that suppression suppression is a very good idea that they try to use in bf3 but it was used terribly in my opinion uh screwing up your someone's accuracy when they're looking straight at somebody and it's just going to be nothing but luck. That's all it's going to be. And when you're shooting at someone point blank in front of you, like he's sitting right there, standing right there. And he's shooting at you, you're shooting at him, and the bullets just deviate all over the place going in so many different directions. And it's just going to go all over the place. And because of that, all it's going to be coming down to is luck. Who's going to have the most bullets in their gun? Which gun are they using as far as how many bullets or they're using a light machine gun and just go ba 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 just spray everywhere and because of that they're gonna have the better chance of winning unlike unless it's gonna be one of those overused guns that everyone uses, like the M16, M416, and AEK. So because of that, I really do hope they're gonna like change it up a bit, just a little bit in order to make it fair, because suppression uh, I'm all for the blurry of screening and putting like uh, making it red and making it kind of black and white and making it kind of hard to see when you're getting suppressed and stuff like that. But as far as messing with someone's accuracy, that's really, really not fair. And I really do hope that they change that. They can keep everything they they want about as, uh, suppression as long as they take away the like fucked up accuracy thing. Where I do hope they do that. So. As far as suppression goes, it's fine. Just take away that bullet deviation and then everything will be a-okay with that. Another thing I would hope that they change is the parachute. There are times when the parachute is very unreliable where I can like activate the parachute and I still die. And I can even be going super slow when I somehow get a bad luck. I don't know how. I, I don't know if this ever happened to anybody else, but there are times where I could be flying and I land and I still get hurt or I still die even though I'm going extremely slow and I have no idea why. So I'm really hoping it's a lot easier to control, a lot easier to deploy, and also reliable if you're jumping off a small building because there are times where I can jump off and the, and the parachute doesn't even want to come out. So I really do hope they fix that as well. Another thing I hope that they, they use is trying to make uh, the point system a little bit better for the the various classes and things because let's face it the the assault class is in the lead because they get a hundred points for every revive they get a kill and if they're they're saving somebody they get the kill that's a hundred points they revive the guy that that the enemy killed that's another hundred points and if he's in your squad point squad that's another ten points right there there's also a re medic the medic kit that they dropped down and you gave him more points. Now, in second place, I believe, would be in the uh, engineer because they're the ones that are destroying the tanks and get uh, disable assist, uh, disable vehicles. They can destroy the vehicle, get the kill. They can repair vehicles. And then third place goes to the support because they provide suppression. They can get a few kills here and there too. They also give out ammo, which not a lot of people do. I don't know why, but they're very stingy. And then in last place goes the recon. For recon, I love the recon class, and that's all I mostly use. And it's really sad to see how the recon is so doesn't give a lot of points, and it only gets a few points for every I think it's like 30 or 20 for motion sensor assist. And even if they spot somebody, it only gives them 10 points. 
I really do wish it was maybe at least 20 points for every spot assist, only if you're using a recon sniper, because then if you're using like a shotgun or something and you spot someone, then that's not really being a sniper, or you're still being a recon, but you're not being a sniper. So I think if you're using a sniper, it should give you a little bit more points, because even though you're not getting the all the kills, you're at least helping your team out. And that will try to put in the, the recon to be a little bit more helpful, because a lot of people are hating on the recon class because a lot of people say all they do is sit in, in the back and camp and shoot. And I have to agree, there are a lot of people that are brand new to this uh, Battlefield games and they don't know how to play that well. So they automatic automatically like assume that they have to be super far away in order to do something. But that's completely wrong. You don't have to do that. There are many ways to be a good recon. But that's another story. Another thing I really hope they, they use is different game modes like totally new game modes that they can use and go like just like go full throttle with realism if they wanted to let's let's talk about this like the bf3 uh only used about like people are saying 15 20 percent of the frostbite 2 engine and then bf4 is going to use the about 80 percent now that's a huge difference and looking at how well the pc looks with the graphics and the gameplay and all that and with 64 players, I wonder how how much more is it going to be with 80%? Because back when the Alpha came out and it looked amazing, it looked so much better than what it is right now. And talk about that the scope glare thing where you can see the little reflection and this like the everything behind you, which is really cool. And like you're using an ACOG scope and the Alpha, it looked really cool. Then they took that out, and there's no more scope that looked really sexy on a sniper. Now now anyway they took that out and that was one of the things I was sad about but another thing that I noticed was that uh, even the knifing you know the knifing in the alpha looks so cool and then you look at the normal one and you have to like it, it's just stupid on console because you have to like slash it and make it known that you're using a knife unlike in the uh, PC can't you like automatically switch to the, the knife I'm not sure I don't play PC but I really do hope they bring back some of those really cool features that the alpha had and since it's going to be 80%, I'm really thinking they might even do that. Also, with the uh, since they're going to be using 80%, I don't think these the consoles that are we using today, like the Xbox 360 and the PS3, they're not going to be willing. To, they're not going to be able to play these games that well, of, and especially with the new generation consoles coming out, which I'm going to be uh, saving up for, and I'm definitely going to get it for BF4, and. Is these old consoles are not going to be able to play it, and I really do hope that they're not going to drag uh, BF4 down just how consoles did with BF3. And I'm a console person, and I already know that consoles dragged the BF3 down. They DICE really had to keep in mind the console community in order to make BF3. And now with these next-gen consoles coming out, I really do hope that they can start leaning towards that side and the PC side rather than the old stuff and, and the old consoles because that's kind of like dying right now. It really is. And once these next-gen consoles come out in this uh, few more, like we hear about it in June and the E3 conference going on, I really do hope that DICE tries to like lean towards them and make their side an even better experience because consoles really do drag BF3 down and I really do hope it doesn't happen like that for BF4 because I'm definitely going to get the next-gen Xbox. And speaking of the next gen consoles, uh, there are rumors, and a lot of people are saying I don't I don't think it's rumor anymore that next gen consoles are going to be having 64 players. Now that is amazing, and being a console person, I definitely am excited for that because I loved how amazing PC looks. I love how the graphics look. I love how sound, the clearness, like the lighting, and having 64 man games. And having giant maps that's something that I was definitely missing and I really am excited for that when the next-gen consoles come out for BF4 and and there's a lot of talk saying that these next-gen consoles are gonna be as powerful as the PC today and um, although the PC is gonna get a lot of upgrades in the in the future this next-gen consoles I don't know it's gonna have some uh, it's gonna put up some competition for that PC and I really can't wait till that happens because then I, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on where it's going to be like, do you want to be 
on a PC, on a desk, you want to do that. Play the big games as well, like uh, WoW or that Star Wars, Star Wars Republic game, uh, which a friend of mine was playing. Or you can be like casually playing on a couch or a chair in your room and just be like, I'm going to just play casually, you know, because I've always been a console person and I'm always like one of those people that just want to relax and enjoy a good game. And when that happens, having that experience of a PC on a console, that's going to put like turn around a lot of people. It's like, all right, you really have to make a decision. Which one do you really want to do? And then once you do that, then you can look at like, okay, so the prices. Do you want to you want to go with the complicated side, which I'm a complete noob with computers, so I don't know how to upgrade a computer and always update for a new game. So I'm I'm going to go with the easy casual side and go with the console cuz that's just how I am. And when you're given the the power of a PC on a console, that's going to be really cool. And I really can't wait for that. Now, another thing I was really hoping that BF4 will have is uh, these uh, type of uh, zip lines. You know, like I've been hearing that it was in uh, Battlefield 2. And when the crossbow came out for Aftermath, there was a lot of talk and saying how they wanted a zip line to happen. And when I thought of that, that's actually pretty cool. Although it can be overused. And it would be kind of awkward to see because there would be a lot of people doing that. And it would be kind of like Spider-Man like like crawling on buildings and things. And and I don't know. I don't think it will work. Maybe it will. I'm not sure. But I don't know. I guess we can keep our hopes up. And another thing I was hoping too was uh, these uh, drop lines and choppers. Like saying you have the support chopper. And instead of jumping out and like relying on that unreliable parachute to to save you if you're dropping down or a small distance and I mean, these soldiers are super weak and they get hurt through the smallest distance of dropping down then I really do hope they have these drop lines where a chopper can just hover somewhere and then drop the drop line and the guys will just like come down on the lines and be able to land safely even that they don't even have to jump off they can have like get on the rope and just like ride the chopper as if they're like on some action movie and just like bah, just shoot everywhere while they're like hanging from the rope while hanging off the chopper that would be so cool and I and that would be really really cool in my opinion so seeing that would be awesome another thing was uh, two-seater jets two-seater jets would be so cool like one would be the pilot the other one would be the bomber in the jet that would be so cool and also having uh, naval war warfare that would be pretty cool because I remember seeing some footage for ba Battlefield 2. Uh, they had these uh, naval warfares with submarines. That would be really, really cool to see some uh, naval warfare while also having it right next to the, the ground warfare. And having more vehicles. Because in BF3, there's not a lot of vehicles in, in a lot of situations. And I really do hope they do that. Another thing... Uh, that I'm hoping for is that if you get hit by a headshot or get knifed you shouldn't be allowed to be revived I know that's a sad thought but it really it would give that sense of realistic value some realism into it saying that if you get shot by a 50 caliber sniper even if that is going to be in BF4 which I hope it right in the face it, you shouldn't be revived or anything I can understand if you get shot or something and you want to be revived and I know it's just a game, but it would give it that sense of tactical situations where, okay, so there's a sniper there. you got to be afraid because that thing could snipe you and you won't be revived. So if he shoots you in the body, of course you, you might even be alive or something, but giving that sense of being knifed in the neck or hit in the head or something, it would, it would give it that sense of like fear, if you want to say. Like you want to take the chance and do something like that or you're going to wait for your teammates to help you out instead of going solo. Because that would really put in a lot of teamwork into the game. And I know this is all just like leaning towards on one side. I'm not sure if it is. But I really do. It goes both ways. I really do hope it happens. Because that would be pretty cool. And that's what I was saying about different game modes. You can have like the normal core, hard, or and then hardcore or realistic mode or something. Where it's like if you get shot you start bleeding out and you have to like actually have an animation of like bandaging your, yourself up or something. Because if you start bleeding you can actually die because you got shot. That would be pretty cool. It would add that really cool realistic feature to it that if you get shot you're going to have to like take cover. You know because if you die 
by bleeding out, it's going to be a slow one, and then you'll start seeing your screen all fade out, which would be really cool. Well, there is a lot of other things I would love to see on BF4, which is why I'm running out of time at the moment. And I will put another video out for you guys and some different uh, thoughts I have for BF4 because there's a lot of talk about it. And even though Endgame hasn't even come out yet and people are talking about BF4, I'm really, really excited for this game because these next-gen consoles are going to make BF4 look so great because I am a hardcore console-only person. So... I'm really excited for this. I really can't wait to play the PC version of BF4, I guess, on the consoles, which is going to be really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and put a comment down because it really does help me out. And I will see you guys on the battlefield. See ya.